Moving on now, the leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution has criticized the U.S. and Europe for harboring anti-Iran terrorists. Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei was speaking on the anniversary of a deadly terrorist attack in Iran, which claimed the lives of over 70 senior officials in 1981. The leader said the terrorists who committed the crime are now living freely in the U.S. and Europe and hold meetings with American and European officials. Ayatollah Khamenei said this clearly exposes the hypocrisy of the self-styled guardians of human rights. Ayatollah Khamenei said terrorist attacks have killed 17,000 people in Iran and those responsible for the killings are in the West. He stressed that the 1981 bombing of the headquarters of the Islamic Republic Party, Iraq's chemical attack on the city of Sardasht in 1987, the assassination of Ayatollah Sadughi in 1981, and U.S. downing of Iranian passenger plane in 1988 are just examples of terrorist acts by the U.S. On, or their agents. To discuss this further, let's get to Ido and talk to Mark Glenn, political commentator. Welcome to the program, sir. Mr. Mr. Glenn, with regards to the Iranian leader's speech about the West hosting anti-Iran terrorists, can you explain for us the amount of hypocrisy Europe and the U.S. is engaged in, and where will such hypocrisy lead to? Well, uh, I think that it's uh, mountainous, the size of the hypocrisy here. Uh, the fact that the United States is making the pretenses of negotiating with Iran uh, in what appears to be an act of good faith, but at the same time uh, has removed uh, this one particular group, uh, uh, the mujahideen e uh which was uh, listed on the U.S. State Department's list of uh, dangerous terrorist organizations. Uh, removed them uh, despite the fact that the overwhelming evidence is that this is still a terrorist group, uh, despite the fact that it may not have the uh, manpower or the funding or the strength that it had in years past when it assisted Saddam Hussein uh, during the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, nevertheless, the fact that the U.S. would be uh, cozying up and playing kissy face uh, with a group, of, a very dangerous uh, group, a cult uh, of terrorists at a time when the United States is making pretenses of negotiating with Iran, in addition to the fact, as you said, that the United States is constantly uh, wagging her finger in the face of the world and lecturing the rest of the world uh, on human rights and terrorism uh, just underscores uh, why the Supreme Leader's statements are 100 percent correct, that you cannot trust America, you cannot trust the West. Uh, the drive to destroy Iran and to undo the revolution of 1979 is just as strong uh, today as it was uh, over 33 years ago when it originally took place. How much are the people of the West aware of such hypocrisy? Well, the people of the West don't even, uh, if you were to ask the average American if they've ever heard of the MEK or the MKO or the Mujahideen Kalk or any of these other groups that the United States has been uh, funding now, not just for years but for decades, they, they would know nothing about this to their own detriment because uh, this same group, the Mujahideen Kalk, that has been listed as a terrorist group, now they are free to travel and to raise money uh, for all of their operations. Uh, that And we can be rest assured that they will be put to use against Iran again, that they will be responsible for blowing things up and for killing people, because at the end of the day, this is what America and Israel are out to do, which is to destabilize Iran as a precursor to what they hope will be uh, the, the Persian Spring that will then unseat the, the present regime uh, in power there. And can these terrorists be brought to justice? Well, they can be brought to justice, but uh, it's unfortunately going to have to come through other means other than uh, the West or any Western institution, because all of these institutions in the West are firmly under the thumb of Israel. Uh, Israel is a terrorist nation that has engaged in thousands of war crimes. Has she ever been brought to justice for any of them? No. The United States has killed millions of people in the Middle East, uh, blatant war crimes. Has the United States ever been brought to justice? No. So, unfortunately, it's going to take another body, it's going to take another avenue to do this. Uh, the Iranians possibly working uh, closely with the Russians and with the Syrians and other world powers that have had enough of all of this warmongering and this injustice. Uh, perhaps they should start their own uh, body of justice that uh, will do the work that the International Criminal Court uh, seems to be unwilling to do. All right, Michael M. Political Commentator from Idaho. Thanks for your thoughts, sir.